Hi, I'm Lee Lauterbach, and I'd like to welcome you to Stallion 51. Stallion 51 is a premier flight operation operating the iconic P-51 Mustang and T-6 Trexan. We primarily train people throughout the world to professionally operate these airplanes, and hopefully we'll make an impact on the safety record and keep these aircraft around. Hope you enjoy the show. This is a perfect example of the difference between a TF Mustang and a D model Mustang, which the TFs or the dual cockpit, dual control Mustangs were made from. Uh, Stallion 51 has two TF Mustangs that allow you to not only experience the Mustang hands-on, but also learn how to fly it in case you are an owner. So the TF has a larger canopy and a taller vertical stabilizer. And if you move over to the right here, you'll see slender, tender, and tall. And you can see that she has a smaller canopy and a shorter tail because she's still the original D model configuration, which is how they were made. Uh, in World War II, the D models were the about third alliteration of the Mustang design. Hi, I'm KT Bud Jones. I'm here in Stallion 51's hangar at Kissimmee, Florida, at the Kissimmee Gateway Airport. We do flight training here, both orientation flights as well as actual flight training, checkout training in the P-51 Mustang like you see here. This one happens to be privately owned, but the fellow who owned this one also trained with us so that he was up to date, up to speed on how to operate these iconic World War II fighters. Now, in a few moments, we're going to be seeing one of Stallion 51's dual cockpit, dual control Mustangs pull out of our hangar and get ready for an orientation flight, sharing the controls with a lucky person who gets the chance to fulfill a bucket list uh, flight experience. And that's what we do here at Stallion 51. These planes are one in a million in many ways. There are about almost 16,000 of them built in World War II. There might be 160 of them left flying and less than a dozen dual cockpit, dual control Mustangs that allows you the opportunity to fly one yourself and to learn how to fly one. Very important when you're talking about a multi-million dollar uh, aircraft as well as one that's uh, quite rare and the ones that have survived. Here at Stallion 51, we also do T6 flights. Uh, along with the Mustangs and unusual attitude training. So we're that uh, campus of higher learning when it comes around to learning how to fly these high performance aircraft. This Mustang was originally developed in the early 40s. It took only 120 days from the time that she was told that we needed a better um, a fighter in World War II to the time that it was uh, had its first uh, flight and was significant in the battles uh, in both the European, the Pacific, and the Mediterranean theater. The markings on over here, as you see, Crazy Horse, those markings, the black and white stripes, are invasion stripes. So when the Mustang was used during the D Day battles of 1944, we were able to tell which aircraft were on our team as we flew over the beaches in Normandy and France. Also, the stars and bars, as you see here, those are the markings of the, of the U.S. Army Air Force back then and today the U.S. Uh, Air Force. Both of these planes are marked in squadron color, sort of like knowing which team you're on. It was important not only to know that you were on the same fighting team, but which squadron you're in so that you could uh, form up on the right people uh, during your missions. They had six 50 caliber guns and uh, uh, almost uh, 15, 16, 1,500 horsepower. T-6 Texan, called the pilot maker and still the pilot maker today. Another fine North American aviation aircraft, just like the Mustang. This one was the plane that all pilots flew before they jumped into any of the bigger and more powerful fighters of World War II, and even today. She's not tricky. She's not slippery, but she is demanding, and she demands that you know all the rules of flying or she's going to smack you hard. This one was actually... 
uh, stationed in Hawaii, back before Hawaii was a state. So the TH stands for Territory of Hawaii, ANG Air National Guard. And her markings are such that it's not like the normal stars and bars, but it has the red stripe through the center. That red stripe indicates that she was used in Korea. Now these planes were actually developed and built in the 30s, but up until the mid-90s were still used in air forces on the front lines um, because she's so good at what she does. She was used not only as a trainer, but in Korea, actually used as a forward air control aircraft, uh, drawing fire towards her so that the fighters could come in and do their job on the enemy. She's a dual cockpit, dual control. Stallion 51 offers orientation flights and training in the T-6 as well. She's a radial engine, unlike that of the Mustang. The Mustang's a water-cooled engine, like your car is. But this is a radial engine, air-cooled. And that's why the Navy always used a radial engine on all of their aircraft. T-6 Texan was not just used for training as the pilot maker, but also used as a forward air control aircraft during Korea, drawing fire to her so that the fighters could do their job. She's also unique because she's a radial engine. You can see big round engine here versus the Mustang's beautiful sleek Merlin engine. That has a great advantage because this radial engine is air-cooled. And if she has shot and gets a bullet in one of her cylinders, she will limp back to where she came from. Whereas the Mustang, a water-cooled engine, is going to probably land pretty quickly and you better be ready for it. That's why the Navy always use radial engine aircraft for their uh, aircraft carrier operations because they knew that the radial engine had a better chance of getting them back to the aircraft carrier, maybe limping, but was going to make it there. The T-6, just like the Mustang, is tail dragger. They're tail draggers because they were far, they had a far easier time landing on unimproved um, uh, landing fields. They could land in grass, they could land in, on pavement, they could land just about anywhere because of the tail dragging feature versus a tricycle gear, which is, has the little wheel in front and the two big wheels on the side under the wings. Tail draggers do have an issue, though, with crosswind, and they can be a handful in a crosswind. They're going to want to call what's called weather vane or try to go into the wind. If that's not where you're planning on going, that's going to be a problem. So you have to be on your game, and that's what we teach here at Stallion 51, how to be on your game, how to follow all the rules, and there's nothing better to teaching you the rules of aviation than the pilot maker, the T-6. She, does, she did it 70, 80 years ago, and she still is today, making sure that your feet know what to do and understand the whole plane. Now, we also have another program called Unusual Attitude Training, which you'll see behind the T-6 is a fancy jet, an albatross, an L-39. Stallion 51 also offers unusual attitude training or upset prevention and recovery training at our campus of higher learning here at, in Kissimmee Airport. This is an albatross or an L-39 uh, jet where we teach people what to do when you get inside out and upside down. That's not the time to be reading the manual. You need to intrinsically know what's the right thing to do when you have lost awareness of where up is. And we train that in our unusual attitude training jet here in the L-39. So now, let's go fly.
Hi, I'm Lee Lauterback. We offer orientation flights and training and hopefully making a large difference in the safety records of these iconic aircraft. We're located in Kissimmee, Florida. Come fly with us.